All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. And today I'm gonna do a question and answer that we put out to a lot of our subscribers asking them to send questions in what people would want me to talk about. So if I don't use your heart soon, hang in because I get thousands of emails right on a weekly basis. So I'm going to start with this one because it just fits into the theme of all the recent videos I've been putting up about positive dog training. So start here. This is Albert from Miami. He has a German Shepherd Grizzly that's four and a half months old. So here's what he writes to me. I have an obedience training Grizzly since we brought him home at one month and three weeks. He picked everything up extremely fast, especially when we gave him treats. He knows the basics, sit, down, stay, come, etc. However, when he is in an outside environment, example outside on the front lawn or around people, he gets distracted by any and every little thing, which causes him to be only partially responsive to my commands. Is this due to age factor, too young, or just poor training on my part? I hope you would address this question because I have a couple of friends with dogs around the same age and they are having the same problem. So, okay. So, this just fits right into all the videos I've just been putting up recently of hitting the positive dog training theme. For some reason, like I say in the other videos, people actually think or are convinced by online YouTube or whatever it is that positive dog training will work for a pet dog, okay? So I'm gonna go through a whole thing here and recap. It is a rare dog that you are gonna have a trained, I mean well-trained puppy or dog in the end going through all positive training. Oh my gosh, she's running from me right now. You see this? Inertia, come here. What? What is this? In Inertia, come. Let's say right now I wasn't in a fenced area. Would you want your dog doing this in public? Hey. Inertia, come here. Huh. But I don't want her to ignore come when called. So this is something that really needs a lot of work. And this is a really good example of why. So I do need to manage regaining control of her here. My first step here is going to be, once I finally do get control of her, is to put her on a long lead. When your dog is playing chase with you like this, they're having a blast. They really enjoy it, and they're just looking at it as a game, probably. But it can be a really dangerous game if it happens at the wrong place. So don't engage in a game of chase like this with a dog this young. In Inertia's case, pretending to leave is usually what gets her to come to me pretty reliably. So, let's see if she'll call my bluff. I think the best way... Right, so now here we are. We're out by the pool. So we're going to attempt to do a little bit of an obedience session right here next to the pool. This is too much for Sonny. Sonny, no? Sonny, sit. Sit. Yes. Sonny, down. Yes. Hey, Sonny. Sonny, yuck. So you notice he's not into this right now. He doesn't really want to train. He wants to get on that pool. This is an environment that I shouldn't be training in yet. Sonny, come here. He's going to pee on stuff because there's other dogs out here. I've got treats in my hand right now. He's not even following a lure. 
he's shying away from the food because he wants to go to the pool. So I only did this to show you an example of an environment that is too hard to train right now. During our training walk is that it becomes familiar to her. If I were to just keep going and ever walk like this in a neighborhood setting, we didn't get very far at all. I was hoping we could walk past a few houses. She's not there yet. I'm not going to continue to insist on failure out of her. We'll wait until she matures a few feet of tether. That's not what we selected for her when we made Dawn. It's a very unnatural skill to When she pays attention to me periodically, I'll go ahead and reward her. But right now, see how she's just pulling ahead. I don't like that at all. Inertia, come on, let's go. Let me see if I can get her over here. Inertia, sis. Inertia, come. Oh, unsuccessful there. This is going to be a bit of a challenge here, and that's okay. I welcome a challenge. There's some goo on the ground over here. I have no idea what it is. It looks gross, and she's trying to get to it. But that's the real world. Things are not going smoothly here at all. Not in a reliable manner yet. Inertia, leave it alone. Leave it. Leave it alone. Whoa, that's exactly the kind of excessive pulling I want to discourage. See, excessive pulling, we'll go back the other way. And right as she starts to pull, I stop and I kind of anchor the leash right here to my hip. From what I'm seeing here, we have a really long way to go before she's trained to adequately walk on a sidewalk like this. Let's see if we can get her to not pull all the way to that door. That's kind of ambitious. Do you know what I have chicken right now? You don't care, okay, well maybe not. Okay, we'll cancel the leash walking session because that's just going to oh. make her frustrated. I'm going to go ahead and pick her up to minimize the pulling because she's very likely to pull all the way over here. That's a good example of just testing the water, seeing how receptive your dog is to training in a given moment. Experience tells me not to force that lesson. There will be plenty of opportunities to practice that in the future. And I'm not going to force it because she's unlikely to comply. So I'm putting her in a lesson that she is not yet prepared for. Look at this. All right, I'll take Samson out and we'll do a little bit. Samson's actually my working patrol dog and he is a Belgian Malinois all right so this is why they're not great pets they're very cuckoo for cocoa puffs sit follow follow down the, the level of command ha ah. you cheater come here Heel. Down. Down. You notice I don't use a stay command. I find stay. Ah, phooey. Down. I told you he was going to make me a liar. Just take your time there, buddy. Down. The uh, level of command down. The stay is redundant. <laughs> Animals and children never work with them on television. Down. Feel. <laughs> this is his reward instead of food. This is what he loves to do. And he will do this all day long. Out. No. Out. Out. Oops. Out. You cheater. I told you you were going to make me look silly. Down. Report. 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 Ah! Yes. So this is a perfect example of an operant dog. He's going to try to figure out what he has to do in order to get to it. Again, you notice he, he didn't come out here looking at other dogs. He didn't come out here looking at people. He's like, how do I get that from your hands? This is engagement. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> No. 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 Thank you. Now you know why we say Malinois are not great pets. Because this is a typical one. Right? So, here I'm going to give you an example of this trainer here in Miami. Probably one of the biggest training companies on all of Florida, right? 100% positive. They're proud of that. They boast about it. So the world gravitates to it, right? <laughs> so 
they have a huge clientele and it's not just Miami they probably have one of the biggest schools in the whole state of Florida and that's all you got to say is 100% positive right and the world will gravitate to you in this day and age right that's a given you don't even have to do marketing you don't have to do anything just say 100% positive and you will have flocks of people just going to you easy peasy right so here's the owner of that company posting on her website right now I would never do this if I was her right this is you don't say these kind of things on your website because if anybody knew better anybody was thinking right which is obvious they're not because they're going to her in hundreds right <laughs> a week I mean flocking in there so they're obviously not reading this statement that I'm gonna give you here in a second or they read it don't care ignore it don't listen to what it said and just go do what they feel like doing because they do 100% positive they're gonna ignore what she wrote there okay so this is the owner's story right and posted on her website so it's public knowledge <laughs> and again remember this is a hundred percent positive dog training only so the owner has on the website that I arrived for a private in-home lesson appointment with my client whose dog I had been training every week for the last six years every week once a week for six years six years straight every week once a week six years <laughs> the client writes here you've been coming to my house every week one time a week for the past six years and my dog is only halfway through <laughs> and I have no intentions of having you go anywhere <laughs> so this is just giving you right the other trainer here with his own dog a mess can't get her under control you know six seven months now he's been working with this puppy and he still hasn't been able to get her to do anything right outside oh my gosh she's running from me right now you see this inertia come here what what is this it, inertia come Let's say right now I wasn't in a fenced area. Would you want your dog doing this in public? Hey. Inertia, come here. Huh. If we can get her to not pull all the way to that door, that's kind of ambitious. Do you know that I have chicken right now? You don't care, okay, well maybe not. Okay. Okay, we'll cancel the leash walking session because that's just gonna make her frustrated. I'm gonna go ahead and pick her up to minimize the pulling because she's very likely to pull all the way over here. That's a good example of just testing the water, seeing how receptive your dog is to training in a given moment. Experience tells me not to force that lesson. There'll be plenty of opportunities to practice that in the future. And I'm not gonna force it because she's unlikely to comply. So I'm putting her in a lesson that she is not yet prepared for. Look at this. Here this owner of this positive company is saying to you and here she goes through also how many clients she has that are in the same category as that client that she's been going years and years and years and they're still not even close to having the dog trained what <laughs> right I mean seriously six years and still going and they're only halfway there right and then 
there. She's saying she was going to sign many, many more to contracts because she's got so many clients like that, right? I mean, I don't even know what else could be said to you. This is watching a professional, supposedly dog trainer, with his own dog, doing only positive and cannot get this dog, his own dog, to do anything, right? Outside. Here, this trainer of one of the biggest companies in Florida is going to clients for six years and beyond with most of their clients because they just can't get the results, right? I mean, this is self-explanatory, right? And this is watching owners and supposed to be specialists in positive. And the game and gimmick to positive is keep going, keep going, keep working at it, keep working at it, and someday it will eventually happen. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that that day for 99% of you out there is never going to come. Not even 12 years from now. So, but this is the truth of the method. This is why, Albert, you're not alone. You are the majority of the population. It just is what it is. And I'm telling you from the side of a grandmaster at positive dog training methods. That is not going to happen unless you have a certain kind of dog. Now, let's recap a little bit of why it appears to work in other circumstances for other people, okay? So, going back to the previous videos that I had done on this to explain the difference of sea animals in the aquariums and all that when they do the shows and all that why the animals perform for these trainers and it's primarily because they're starved in order to get the animals motivated to perform on those days of the show right it's plain and simple there's no mystery to that now saying that one of now, good friend of mine that was down here to go to my training school, Moshi Caffrey, who's now got a successful company up in Denver, up in Colorado. Him talking to a dolphin trainer when he went to go have the experience playing with dolphins the trainer told him straight up that no matter how much we starve them, <laughs> that there are days that the dolphins will just lay on the bottom of the pool and will not come out of those enclosures or off the bottom of the pool knowing that we're calling them to go do the show. Even though we starved them and they're hungry, they refuse to perform. Right? That's just nature when you're going positive, right? The, 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 you're giving them choices. And good luck with that. The dolphin doesn't feel like performing. He's going to lay on the bottom of the pool. You're not going to have a show with that one this day. So let's hope all the other ones work, right? So I hope that clears up for you, Albert. <laughs> and the rest of the world that is trying to believe in this and reads millions of people saying that this this is the way and the method and that right these are experts here right of the method that they can't even get their own dogs to listen or their clients six to nine twelve years later so these are not exceptions these are the rule right this is not an unusual if this guy can't get his dog to listen and this other trainer here in Miami working with clients dogs for six to 12 years because they still haven't gotten there after six years of every week positive positive every day positive positive this is the 
norm, not the exception. It's just that one or that one. That's how it goes with all. That's why we have the rules to the clubs. That's why, because they know, right? So, Albert, you and your friends, just keep in mind, if you don't change that method and technique, you're going to be doing this the rest of your lives, right? The dogs are never going to learn well. So, that's the end of this session. Dog Talking Coffee with Richard. So, anybody who's confused about methods or <laughs> have been brainwashed and convinced and saturated with positive dog training, I hope this opens people's eyes to understand the truth. Because enough is enough with this. <laughs> so, till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer.